three sauce recipe that you can put over frozen meatballs. You put it into the crock pot with all those three, only three ingredients on top of those. Let them go. Yeah, sounds delicious. I'm gonna serve it over rice. You ready? Let's go ahead and get started with this one. I'm gonna call this one good for the holidays because you can use a bag of meatballs frozen. This is 20 ounces and then it's just a few other ingredients and you can put this all together and you know what? Serve it as appetizers. Pour this over like mashed potatoes or rice or even like the bag suggests here. Put it in a sub. Oh, those meatballs smell good when I opened them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Those smell really good. I'm gonna empty the whole bag into the crock pot. <laughs> can y'all see that? I'm sorry, I already opened the can. This is whole berry cranberry sauce, and I'm just going to scoop it out and put it all over the meatballs. All right, can you see all those cranberries in there? Yeah, that looks good. Now, if you don't like the whole cranberries, you can get the cranberry sauce and use that. There we go. The next ingredient is one envelope of onion soup mix. Now, it comes in a pack or a box like this, and it's got two packages in there, and they'll look like this here. I like to mix it all up. I'm just going to sprinkle it across the cranberries. And then they say to add some Catalina dressing. I'm going to add one cup. I'm just going to take a spatula and stir this all together. Okay, they say cover it with a lid and cook it all day on low. And I'm gonna assume that's around six to eight hours until your meatballs are nice and cooked through and tender. I'll be back with the finished product. Okay, these are done. They're very tender. Look at this. I've already tried one. <laughs> They're so delicious. I'm going to be serving this over some rice. Now I make my chicken flavor rice, which I just cook with some better than bouillon roasted chicken flavor. I'm going to sprinkle some parsley on it. Look at that. That looks delicious. Let me just take a stab at this meatball here. They're so tender. Take a bite with the rice. You know, this is make perfect appetizers for the holidays. You can even make a whole crock pot of these for football season, which we're in right now. All right, there's my bite. Mmm, they're really good. Porcupine meatballs. Now this is very reminiscent of flavors from cabbage rolls, which I really love. In a large bowl, I've placed the two pounds of ground beef. We're gonna place one cup of the uncooked white long grain rice. We're gonna crack two eggs in. There we go. Sprinkle in about one teaspoon of Worcestershire. I'm gonna sprinkle in about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. One tablespoon of parsley flakes, some black pepper, about a quarter of a teaspoon, and a little bit of salt. I had to go get the one that's got some salt in it. There we go. We're going to start mixing this all together. I've just got some gloves here that I'm going to put on. Now I'm going to blend this all together until it's well incorporated, and then I'm just going to form one inch meatballs. Now, if you find that your mixture is too wet, you can add some breadcrumbs to it. Or maybe if it's, you think it's too dry, add a little bit of milk. I'm going to put my skillet over a medium-high heat. Now, it's a very large skillet because we're going to be simmering the meatballs in there after we brown them up. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of butter. 
Now before I put the meatballs in, I want the butter to be sizzling. That way we can start browning the meatballs. I'm going to be using a one inch cookie scoop to form the meatballs. And what you want to do is just take your mixture, run it through your bowl of mixture, just flatten it out on the side. Now you can half this recipe if you want to do that and just do the one pound of ground beef, just half everything else. I just kind of push it in and then scrape off the edges there, get it a good sized meatball. There we go, perfect. And that rice is going to bloom up inside the meatball and poke out. This is the first batch. I'm going to brown these up. So you just want to take your meatballs and just flip them around and just be careful with them so you want to hold their shape. So now that I have them all turned over, I'm going to let them brown just a little bit on that side and then just start spinning them around. I'm going to cook up my second batch and then put them all back together. And then I'm going to bring you back. In a small bowl, I'm just going to add the two cans of tomato soup. I'm going to take 14 ounces of beef broth, just slosh it around into the cans to get the excess tomato soup out. Put some black pepper in, a little bit of garlic powder, and a little bit more Worcestershire. Mix this together. Then I'm going to pour this over the meatballs. So we're going to put the temperature of the meatballs up to a high level. That way we can start simmering the sauce and bring it to a boil. They're all sunk into the sauce there. Once it starts coming to a boil, we're going to turn the heat down to a low. We're going to let this simmer with a lid on for 35 to 40 minutes until the meatballs are nice and tender and cooked through. Don't they look like porcupines? Every so often while it's cooking during that 35 to 40 minute range, you want to make sure you lift the lid and just kind of push the meatballs around so they don't stick down to the bottom. We got the porcupine meatballs simmering in that delicious tomato soup. We got the cabbage that we sauteed down right here and some mashed potatoes to go with it all. Let me plate this up and I'm going to give it all a try for you. Mm, mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. If you want the cabbage rolls flavors, make this porcupine meatball cabbage mashed potato plate anytime. If you're looking for a simple dish that you don't want to cook like a big massive turkey or the turkey breast, then this one is for y'all. In a large bowl, I've got one and a half cups of stovetop cornbread stuffing mix. Oh, and it's already seasoned and it smells so good in there. I'm going to go ahead and add half a cup of some chicken stock or chicken broth. Mix it all together. I'm going to add one tablespoon of garlic, some salt, some pepper, two eggs that have kind of whisked up together, half of a minced onion, one celery stalk kind of minced down, and then about two tablespoons of parsley that I've roughly chopped. All right, I'm going to go ahead and give this a mix. All right, now that I've got all this mixed together, I'm going to go ahead now and add one pound of some ground turkey. And I'm just going to go ahead now and just kind of lightly stir all this together. I have my mixture all mixed up together now. I have my oven preheating at 400 degrees. I'm using a cookie scoop to kind of get uniform shapes on my meatballs. I have a pan with kind of a lip on it so that the grease doesn't roll off of it. And I just put some parchment paper on here. I'm taking the meatballs that I have formed and I'm just going to go ahead and just roll them, give them a nice roll to form them. So I formed my meatballs and now I've got a little bit of olive oil in a bowl here and just a little brush here. I'm just going to brush the tops of these. All right y'all, I'm ready to get these in the oven. These will take about 20-25 minutes. Give them a check after 20 and just see if you need to cook them a little longer. But I'll be right back. I'm using a turkey gravy packet by McCormick here and I'm going to be adding a cup of chicken stock to that. I've got about two tablespoons of butter in my pot here. I'm going to add some salt and pepper and then I'm going to add some sage, rosemary, thyme, and some parsley. All right, so I have it over medium-high heat and I'm just going to go ahead and whisk all this together and then let it thicken up. All right, y'all, I've pulled my meatballs out of the oven. Don't they look delicious? There is my turkey stuffing meatballs. Look at that, y'all. The perfect meatball bite, right? 
Today I am going to show you one of my favorites and it is glazed cheddar stuffed meatballs. I'm going to go ahead now and show you all the ingredients we're going to need to make these meatballs. Now I've got two pounds of ground beef. We're going to use about half a cup of breadcrumbs or panko crumbs which I have here or you can even use sliced bread about one to one and a half slices. Now I've got a quarter to one half cup of milk. I've got two eggs. I've got about nine ounces of cheddar cheese cubes. For the seasonings, we've got garlic powder, onion powder, pepper, salt, and parsley. Now this is all for the meatballs. The glaze is gonna be a simple brown sugar, ketchup, and mustard mixture. I'm gonna show you where that comes into this. All right, let's go ahead and start making the meatballs. All right, so the first thing you're gonna learn this morning is that I am going to be baking these meatballs in the oven. You wanna go ahead and preheat it to 400 degrees. Now I have a large bowl here and I'm going to place all of my ingredients for the meatballs into the bowl here and then I'm gonna give it a nice mix and see if we need to add like more breadcrumbs to kind of dry it up a little bit or if we need to add a little bit more milk to kind of, you know, not make it be so dry. I'm going in. Now, to get started, I've got a sheet pan here. Now, you want one with a nice size lip on it. That will keep the grease from rolling around in your oven. Right? We don't want that. I put some parchment paper on it, and also, I've got a cookie rack here that I'm going to put on top of that. And that will keep the meatballs from, you know, sitting in all those juices and, you know, fat that comes out of it. So that's what I'm going to do there. Now, you can do it without the rack, and that's totally fine. So when they come out of the oven, just go ahead and pop them off really quick. I've got my cheese cubes already here, and I've got my meatball mixture and a one-inch cookie scoop. Or you can use like a tablespoon, all right? That's going to be about the size of them. So I'm going to go in, grab a handful of it. All right. I'm going to kind of roll it into a ball. Take one of the cheese cubes and push it into there and then cover it up. Make sure you can't see any piece of that cube of cheese. There we go. Now, I'm going to stick that right on my pan right there. All right, that's all we're going to do. Do we get all of these on the pan? So about one scoop, one piece of cheese. And then just cover up the cheese. And there we go. I've got about 35 meatballs here, one inch scooped with some cheddar cheese in there. Now these are going to go into my preheated oven at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. We're going to pull them out and then we're going to glaze them with that delicious glaze that I'm going to make for them and then put them back in the oven. All right, so in just a small bowl here, I'm going to put about a quarter cup of brown sugar. I'm going to add some ketchup, probably about uh, four tablespoons. Can y'all see? There we go. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to shake the mustard because we don't want the watery stuff. And then probably about two teaspoons of that. All right, I'm going to take my spoon and kind of mix that all up. Go ahead now and with just a brush, I'm going to smear this sauce onto each meatball. You know, if you don't want to make this sauce, you can also do barbecue sauce. Just get your favorite barbecue sauce out and use that. That would be really good. All right, y'all, that noise is my fan back there. I got the cabbage going, I got the oven on for the meatballs, so the fan kicked on. All right, so these are going to go back in the oven for another 10 to 12 minutes until I get a thermometer check on the inside that they are done. All right, y'all. I'll be back. All right, y'all. Look at these. Mm, mm, mm. These are ready to go. I'm just letting them sit here on the pan for just a minute to kind of just fully solidify. I love that little hit of cheese on the inside of that meatball. And that glaze 
gives it a nice little sweetness also. Oh my gosh, that was really good. One skillet Swedish meatballs and noodles. One of my favorite dishes. If I was stuck on an island somewhere and I had to pick one dish, that would be it. <laughs> this recipe came from my mom who learned how to make it from her grandmother. So it goes way back. And I'm gonna show you how to make this and we're gonna do it all in one skillet, even with the pasta. So if you were ready for this one, you guys, let's go ahead, grab a big skillet, and let's get started. We're gonna start by making the meatballs first. They're so simple to put together. So come on and join me. Now what I have is one and a half pounds of ground beef. You can even go to like one pound if you want to do that. To this, I'm going to add one egg that's beaten. I'm going to add half a cup of some panko breadcrumbs, or you can use regular breadcrumbs if you would like. I've got a quarter cup of milk. I'm going to add one teaspoon of Worcestershire, an eighth of a teaspoon of regular salt. Now I'm doing that because I want to put in an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic salt. And then I'm going to add in a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Now you can either dice up one onion or you can put in some minced onion, about one tablespoon, or you can add like one teaspoon of onion powder. I'm going to put in a full onion, chopped. I'm going to add this to my mixture. Okay, we're going to go ahead and combine everything until it's well mixed. Just make sure that we are not over mixing. That's a good mix right there. First thing we're going to do, I am using a one inch cookie scoop and I'm just going to run it through the meat. And we're just going to form them by rolling them and squeezing until they take form, just like that. Now the one inch cookie scoop will keep these meatballs all the same size and very uniform. But you don't want to pack them too hard because then the liquid that we're going to put in the pan won't be able to really get into that meatball and give us a nice flavor. Nice little roll there. Now I tend to make a lot of meatballs because I love having extras during the week. You can freeze this meal, have it for leftovers. I love the bits of onion in there. Just gonna add flavor to that meatball when it cooks down. Over medium high heat, I'm gonna place a large skillet place two tablespoons of some cooking oil. Now I use avocado oil and to that I'm going to place two tablespoons of butter. So we want to make sure the butter is nice and melted and sizzling with the oil and that'll help brown the meatballs really good. Okay when you start hearing the sizzle like I can hear right here I'm going to start dropping my meatballs in and then you want to let them sit. Don't move them around. Let them sit and get a nice browning going on. Oh, did you hear that? Now usually I have to do these in two batches because I make a lot of meatballs. You want that nice sear on these all the way around. That keeps the meatballs from falling apart. All right, we're gonna let them sit there for a few minutes to get nice and brown. Now, we're not trying to cook the meatballs all the way through, all right? But we do wanna get them nice and brown all the way around the meatball. We're gonna flip one, oh, perfect. 
Can y'all see that brown right there? That's what we're looking for. So we're going to turn them all over and let them brown on the other side. And then by the time you get to the other side, then you can start really rotating the meatballs around. You want them to keep their shape, so just be gentle when you turn them around. All right, we're going to give them a few more minutes, and we're going to shake them around and just make sure that the sides are all nice and browned also. All right, what I'm going to do is just move over the meatballs. I'm just going to drain some of the grease out. I'm just going to place some paper towels into the side of my pan right here. And tilt it a little bit. There we go. I'm going to pour in two cups of beef broth. I'm placing my pan on a high heat. I'm going to bring this to a boil. I have made Swedish meatballs in the crock pot, so if you want to check that out, I'll link it down below. Okay, we have a boil. We're going to take the temperature down to a low, and then we're going to let this simmer for 20 minutes with the lid on. 20 minutes are up. I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off. They smell amazing. I've got a pack of No Yolks Extra Broad egg white pasta. This is 12 ounces. We'll pour it all on top of the meatballs. I'm going to stir this around. Now if you need to add about one cup of water you can do that or you can add another cup of broth. I'm going to turn the heat up to a medium high and try to get the noodles into the broth a little bit. They all don't have to fit in there. What we're going to do is place the lid on. We're going to cook these for about 10 to 12 minutes until the pasta is cooked through and nice and tender. We're going to take the lid off every few minutes and stir it up. That way the pasta can get down into the juices. So make sure you check your liquid level. If you feel like you need to add more liquid, and you can add a little bit more water or some beef broth. And then just check your pasta for doneness. Now if you're using a different type of pasta, it might need to cook longer, okay? These kind of egg noodles right here tend to cook less than just a regular pasta. All right, nothing says Swedish meatballs like some sour cream. I'm gonna put about a quarter to half a cup of sour cream in and give that a good stir. I love Swedish meatballs and noodles with green beans. Now I would have cooked them all together in the pot here, but my husband doesn't like green beans out of a can, so I cook them separately for me and my kids because they like green beans too. All right, I'm just going to stir these up in the last minute or two. Just finish cooking your pasta until you get to the texture that you desire for eating egg noodles. Look at that, all in one skillet. Oh my goodness, see, do you see how the meatballs kept their shape through the whole process? And they cooked for 40 minutes about, so you know they're nice and tender. Let me plate this up for you. I'm gonna turn off the heat. There's my bite. Mmm. That is so good. That sour cream that blends in there, mmm, makes it nice and creamy. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed watching me make one skillet Swedish meatballs and noodles. These never last in my house. Those meatballs will disappear faster than lightning around here. One of my favorite crock pot meals that I like to cook that is so easy to put together and it only uses three ingredients is the Hawaiian barbecue style meatballs. I love these and really all you're going to need is a bag of meatballs, a can of pineapple tidbits, 
and then some barbecue sauce. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to spray the inside of our crock pot. And now what you want to do is just open up your meatballs. Now, let me show you the ones I'm using. So these are made with beef, pork, and chicken, and they're just the home style meatballs. These were oven baked, oven baked. And I'm using a 26 ounce size. So there's 52 meatballs in there is what they're saying. To that, I'm gonna go ahead now and add my barbecue sauce. This is a honey barbecue sauce. It's gonna add a really good flavor to it. It's a 28 ounce size bottle. I'm going to add one can of pineapple tidbits juice and all because it's got 100% pineapple juice that's what's going to give it that lovely Hawaiian flavor this is a 20 ounce size so I'm just going to pour that all over that's it we're gonna put a lid on it this is a fast cook y'all it's gonna take about two to three hours on high so you can do it like three hours on low, three to four hours on low. Just check your meatballs at that point. So these are really good for appetizers, but we like to make these and then have them for dinner. I'm gonna see y'all back here as soon as these are done. Okay guys, here is my three ingredient Hawaiian style meatballs in the crock pot. Don't those look delicious? They smell amazing. Today I'm going to show you how to make Coca-Cola meatballs. You can eat these over mashed potatoes, rice, or pasta. Or heck, just eat them right out of the baking dish. <laughs> okay, the first thing we're gonna do is make the meatballs, and then we have a delicious sauce that we're gonna make for them. So in a large bowl, we're gonna start off with two pounds of ground beef. So what we're gonna do is take about a quarter cup of chopped onions, we're gonna add them to the meat. Now I've diced these pretty small, and I did about half of an onion and half of it's gonna go into our meat mixture and then half of it's gonna be used for the sauce. Now that's gonna be the same thing for the bell pepper. This was kind of a small one, so, but I diced it up pretty fine, kind of like I did the white onion. So I'm just gonna place half of those into my meat mixture. All right, we're gonna add in a quarter cup panko crumbs. Now you can use seasoned breadcrumbs or regular breadcrumbs, it's whatever you want. I'm gonna be using the panko crumbs, they're light and crispy. I have one beaten egg, quarter cup of milk. I'm gonna go in with a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of Worcestershire. I'm gonna flavor with some salt, quarter of a teaspoon, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper and then we're going to mix this all together. What we're going to do now is form the meatballs. I've got about a one and a half inch scoop. So I'm just going to go into the meat mixture, pull it along the sides, give it a nice rolling action here, and then just place it on a plate. This way they'll keep all the meatballs uniform all the same size. What I like to do with my meatballs is sear them on all sides, get them nice and brown and crispy on the edges before we bake them in the oven with the delicious sauce. So I'm just going to place them in a skillet really quickly. I'm going to put it on medium high heat. I'm going to add two tablespoons of butter another layer of flavor. If you don't want to do that, you can add a little bit of oil. Now I'm going to bring this to a sizzle because I want the pan really hot. That way when we put the meatballs in, 
they'll start searing. While that's happening, we're gonna go ahead and take a nine by 13 baking dish. I'm just gonna spray it with some cooking spray. That way when we put the meatballs in and they bake, they won't stick to our baking dish. Now let them brown on one side and get nice and crispy before we start rotating them around. All right, I'm turning the meatballs over. Y'all come here. I want y'all to see this. That's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way my husband loves meatballs, let me tell you. All right, once the meatballs are browned on all sides, doesn't take very long, just go ahead and remove them, drain the grease from them, and just place them into our baking dish. One layer. Okay, what we're gonna do is drain some of the grease out of our pan. We're gonna make the sauce in there, just a really quick sauce. So what I'm gonna do is just take some foil, kind of make it a cup. Just gonna place it in a bowl. Pour the grease into it. Not all of it, leave about a tablespoon of grease. All right, we're just gonna let that cool down then we can toss that. All right, there's my onions. I don't know if y'all can see that right here in the bell pepper. This will start building the sauce. I just want to soften these down just a little bit. I'm going to season these with some salt and pepper. Quarter teaspoon of salt. Quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I'm going to add 10 ounces of tomato soup or you can put in tomato sauce. Add in a quarter cup of beef broth, two teaspoons minced garlic, Worcestershire, about one teaspoon. Let's go ahead and turn off the heat. Now we're going to add the main ingredient. That's what it's all about Coca Cola. Eight ounces. I'm just going to stir it in. That smells delicious. All right, grab a spoon. See if your seasonings are where you need them. Mm. Oh, I can't wait for this one. That's delicious. All right, I'm gonna take a ladle and start ladling the sauce over the meatballs. We wanna make sure that we cover all the meatballs. You can definitely taste that sweetness from the Coke in this. Oh, yeah, that was a good flavor. I've done it in the crock pot with a roast and put Coca-Cola in it. That was really good. Now this is a doubled recipe for the sauce, so if you don't want this much sauce, then you can uh, half the recipe. But you know what? <laughs> You're going to be putting this over something. Some mashed potatoes, rice. Plus these are going to steam in this sauce also. I've got my oven preheating at 350 degrees. I'm going to place this in there for one hour. Now you don't have to cover this at all. And then about 30 minutes beforehand, before it's done, you can go ahead and start your rice, your potatoes, or your pasta. That way it's all done at the same time. All right, there's the meatballs. One hour later, that sauce just went right into these meatballs. Oh gosh, they're so flavorful. I've already tried one. Look at that sauce. So I made some rice, 
and I'm going to put the meatballs over it. Y'all ready for the close-up? Here's my bite. Mmm. Oh my gosh, those meatballs are so tender. So full of flavor and that gravy. Oh, I'm glad I made the rice for it. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That gravy just kind of caramelized somewhat in the oven and baked right into those meatballs. It's so delicious. All right, y'all let me know what you think of my Coca-Cola meatballs. And give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification. That way, you'll always know when shows like this one here are posted. Y'all comment down below if you're ready to make Coca-Cola meatballs. I will see you on the next episode. Mm.